if you're watching this you're most likely a medical student and before anything i just want to say well done you're doing amazing you can do it <laughs> you have all it takes <laughs> you're not inferior you're not dumb you're actually amazing courageous and smart and you do amazing so if you're a first year medical student and you're coming to uni, you're coming to medical school and you're looking for advice on overall how to just be successful in medical school, this video is for you. If you're already in medical school and you just feel like you could be doing things much better to like succeed more, do better in your exams and overall just be happy and not lose your mind while you're in medical school, this video is also for you. If you don't want to be a medical doctor, don't study it. Emotional, damn it! Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. Why? Like, why are you putting yourself through the stress? Take it from me, it's not worth it. Don't do it. That's the first advice I would give you. If it's your mother, your father, whoever, your teachers in secondary school, or you feel like you have to impress people with your life. They'll be angry for a short while, but after a while they will accept the truth and life goes on. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that has to live with the consequences of every choice you make. So if you don't want to study medicine, don't. Learn how to learn. Yes, learn how to learn. Funny thing is, um, they don't teach you how to learn. Even in school, they don't teach you how to actually learn because cramming is not learning recopying your slides recopying your notes is not learning learn how to actually learn information how to actually assimilate information understand it and be able to reproduce it when it is asked of you there are several resources or several um, youtubers that talk about proper learning methods the one youtuber i actually learned a lot from was ali abdal and i would link his video in the description you should definitely watch his videos about active recall about space repetition and about all these effective learning methods are actually backed by science and learn how to learn for you some people are audio learners some people are visual learners some people learn by doing more than just passively listening so you should definitely learn what kind of learner are you because it will help you a lot so the next thing i would say is you have to be consistent you have to be consistent you must be consistent <laughs> like this is the one you have died on especially in medical school you need to be consistent with studying every day you have to be consistent if you're consistent with the habits of studying daily you wouldn't really have a problem in medical school trust me because it's the bare minimum and funny enough it's so simple that it looks like it's not enough but it is enough if you study for 30 minutes every day wow. if you don't really need textbooks contrary to popular opinion i'm in the fifth year of medical school and i've never bought a single textbook in my life you don't need textbooks trust me the lecture notes are already enough and you won't cover all of them so why are you buying textbooks that you don't read is it for guy or do you want to just show everybody that's oh i'm medical so i'm so serious you don't need it if you're in a school like mine your school library has all the books you need so why are you buying books if you don't understand anything go to youtube watch a youtube video or read an article you can use them as reference books so you could go and check a specific thing maybe a specific concept or idea that you don't understand and you can read it up not like you carry the book and reading like story book it's not gonna work there are sites there's z library there's um pdf.net sites that have like pdf versions of this book so just to save money except you love having books like okay you can go ahead but you don't, absolutely don't need all these books the next thing I would say is attend your classes. I take it from me, attend your classes. And more than just attending classes, know which classes to attend and which classes to dip. Because not every class is beneficial. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's not every lecturer that can teach. It's not every lecturer that can explain. So attend the first few classes, definitely. And with time, you discover the lecturers that going to their class doesn't add anything to you. And you can skip their class and do something more beneficial like reading something else or going to the library instead. Another reason why attending classes is really important is because medicine is so broad 
it is so wide there's a lot of things you should know so when you attend classes the lecturers actually narrow it down for you and they will obviously come and tell you like oh this is some lectures are direct anyways they will tell you you should know this for your mcqs or you should know this for your theory or certain things you just hear them saying over and over again those are definitely important topics that you should read so attend your classes it will help you narrow down what you need to actually know and what you don't need to know the next thing is your residual knowledge will save you in medical school and this goes back to my point of building a habit of studying consistently it might sound cliche but nine times out of ten the questions they will ask you in your mv exams or your professional exams are not the things you would actually study for the exam there are things that you have been studying like concepts you've already learned like way 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 back and a lot of times it is actually your residual knowledge that you use to write these professional exams rather than the things you just read for the exam so this goes back to reference my points about consistent studying study consistently like make it a habit build the habits if you're like me and you don't like studying you just have to force yourself to study consistently so the next thing I'd like to say is that you may fail in medical school. The chances of you failing in medical school are very high and it is okay. It's not the end of the world, trust me. Especially if you're coming from high school when you're really smart and you're used to smashing and getting all A's. <sighs> I'm not trying to be a bad prophet, but... Hmm. At least once you will most likely experience a failure in medical school and it's okay when it does happen you can come back to this video and watch this part and listen to me telling you that it's okay it's not the end of the world you will move on from it life will go on you will recover it doesn't mean you're a bad student it doesn't mean you're horrible it doesn't mean you're useless it is just a test and life goes on Another thing I want to say is because you're smart in secondary school or high school doesn't automatically mean you do as medicine I'm sorry, take it from me here, you know, 329 in jam, 5 A stars in um, Cambridge C O levels and 1 A, um, I work 7 A 1s, 2 B 2s and I have failed exams in medical school. <laughs> pharmacology, I'm telling you what pharmacology did to me. It's not an assurance you get, so don't bother when your success is in secondary school or high school and then use it and become complacent. And feel like I don't have to do much. That can take you through 100 level, but from 100 level, you're very open. So, the next thing I would say is do things outside of medicine. Do something outside of medicine. Medicine has that, cap that tendency, not capacity, that tendency to consume you. It feels like every single thing I'm doing has to be related to medicine. If I'm not studying, I should be in the clinic. I should be in the world, I should be in the library, I should be in class, like I should be doing something. But it doesn't have to be like that. Still try to live your life outside of medicine because it is a very rigorous program and it's very long. In Nigeria, to study medicine, you're spending six years in uni. That's if you don't have to deal with strikes and all the other wish wish that is to add. So imagine going six years of your life and the only thing you've advanced in it's just your knowledge about the human body like six years i feel like a lot of people graduate and they don't even know who they are outside of medicine and medicine is great but medicine is not life like there is more to life there is you as a human being there are your own personal dreams your goals your relationships your mental health your beliefs your values your principles as an individual and those are things that you should definitely work on alongside medicine so i would say pursue things outside of medicine pursue your interests i know the next thing you say is there's no time but you have time you got time you got fucking time baby you understand you're always on instagram you have time you're always on twitter you're always on tiktok you have time you always have time you can make time you just have to be very disciplined make time for your relationships like go out with your friends call your family these are other important aspects of life that make you happier as a human being and just increase your overall life experience don't neglect your mental health don't neglect your mental health I'm stressing this especially because medicine is going to test your mental health Oh, <laughs> there are times when you really be wondering, is it really worth, like, is life really, or is there something wrong with me? Like, there's this tendency to really self-sabotage because you feel like you never quite measure up. 
don't try to be delusional or don't try to live in denial that you're okay because it will only end up coming to bite you. I use myself as an example in 300 level of medical school. I went through a, I don't know what to call it, if it was a phase or a period in time where my mental health was just like at the bottom i was literally at rock bottom and i struggled a lot that academic year i feel like it was just god that helped me pull through but i was going through a lot i wasn't eating i was isolating myself i was crying all the time and those things affected my ability to study so i found out that when my mb exam came and that was the first ever mb exam i was actually taking when that exam came around i struggled I've never struggled. Okay, on path and farm, but path and farm I was mentally stronger, so I don't know which one was actually more difficult. But that 300 level, I think it was God and it was my mom that just kept on pushing me and like encouraging me to keep on going. So I feel like if I had gotten help earlier, I would have managed that situation. My mental health wouldn't have been as bad as it was, and I would have been able to prepare better for my exams. So this is why I say don't neglect your mental health. If you need help, talk to somebody, get help. Talking to your friends is nice. They definitely care for you and they want to help you out. But sometimes they can't be there for you in the way that you really need them to be. Because if you're in medical school, there's a high chance that 70 to 80 percent of your friends are also medical students because you really have time to go out and socialize. And they are also busy with their own lives as well. They are also trying to figure out how they are going to make it how they are going to survive and even if your friends are not medical students like life is going on for everybody so a lot of times i feel like we expect so much from people when they are also trying to survive the same way we are trying to survive so get professional help it will help a lot i feel like you know about mental health but mental health is important so pray 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 Read your Bible, pray every day. <laughs> People say this thing that medical students are generally closer to God. It's true because when you are suffering, you have to be close to God. <laughs> it's just normal life phenomenon. <laughs> prayer changes things. Prayer like doesn't allow weapons fashioned against you to prosper. And medicine is a weapon fashioned against every living individual. <laughs> so. You have to pray. Take God serious. I don't think anything has really tested my faith as much as medical school so far in my 20 years of living. Ha! Huh. If I think back to 400 level pharmacology, 400 level pathology, and how I passed my 400 level MBA exam, the only explanation is that God did it. Because there's no other way to explain how you pass the MBA exam of a course you've been feeling since the first block. Filled it three times, then I passed it in the MB. Up to today, like I still live in the now, so I'm like, ah, did I really pass? I'm not supposed to go and check in my portal again because it seemed like there was no way out. But when my back was against the wall, <coughs> I thought the silver was over. You made a way. Just pray, talk to God, and He'll give you the help that you definitely need because hard work is great but hard work with favor and grace there's definitely a difference so as much as you're covering things in the physical also cover things in the supernatural i wish you all the best in your journey through medical school and i know that you're going to be okay at the end of the day you're going to be okay so progress over perfection the goal is not for you to be perfect the goal is just that you get a little bit better Thank you.